A while ago, I made a video talking about the M1 processors and how Apple is optimizing them to be super fast. On that video, we also mentioned that Apple is moving away from the x86 or the Intel architecture to the ARM architecture. And I asked you to let me know in the comments if you would like to see the difference between these architectures in another video. Luckily for me, many of you said yes to the question and because I read all the comments, I saw how many upvotes those questions had. So we decided to make a video exactly about that. Annyeonghashimnika! Nicolas in Milano. Today's video, we are going to talk about the difference between the x86 or the Intel architecture versus the ARM architecture. Also, we're going to learn why ARM was first popular among mobile devices and now it's moving to power laptops, server, and I don't know if you knew this, but even supercomputers, the top one fastest supercomputer in the world called the Fugaku in Japan is using ARM processors. To understand this difference, first we have to learn how the code that developers write on their keyboards is translated to zeros and ones. So let's get started by first looking at this very simple piece of C code. On this function called add, all we're doing is creating three number variables called a, b, and c. Then we say that a is equals to two, b is equals to two, and c is equals to a plus b. That's it, that's the code. This code will be executed by the CPU or the central processing unit of our computer, which is basically the brain, the one that knows all the math and the one that does all the calculations. The problem is that the code as it is right now cannot be run by the CPU because the CPU only understands zeros and ones. What we have to do is to get closer to the processor by translating our code into a language that humans can sort of understand and that processors can easily turn into zeros and ones, into binary code. This transformation of code is called compilation and the language that we want to compile to is called assembly language. In assembly language, the C code that we wrote before will be divided into all the instructions that the processor needs to follow to run the code. So, for example, if I wanted to run that C code in a machine that has a Nico processor, let's say, then the assembly language that I will get when I compile my code will look something like this. And this is just an example. This is not real assembly code, but this captures the essence of what assembly is. Assembly code explains literally to the computer all the steps required for the program to run. In this hypothetical assembly code that is running in a hypothetical Nico processor, we see that our code has three instructions. We have load, put, and add. Load will reserve a space in memory, put will put a number on that memory address, and add will just add the values on a memory address. Now all we have to do is give this code to the assembler, which turns everything into zeros and ones, and that's it. The processor will now be able to run our code. But now we have a problem. Because our code was compiled to be run in a computer with a Nico processor, if another user with the Intel processor or AMD processor want to run the code, they won't be able to. This is because processors with a different architecture like Intel x86 or ARM have a different ISA. ISA means instruction set architecture, which is basically a set of commands or instructions that the processor is able to execute. If we want an Intel or an ARM processor to be able to run the code that we saw before, we're going to have to compile that code again, but this time we're gonna have to make assembly code that uses the instructions of those specific processors. If we compile that code to be running an Intel architecture, for example, we will get an assembly code that looks something like like this. If we compile the code to be run in an ARM architecture, which as we know is what the M1 MacBooks have, the assembly code will look something like this. Now, as you can see, they share some instructions like move and add, but for the most part, they look very different from each other. But the name of the instructions is not the only thing that makes them different. The most important difference that they have is the architecture. The x86 family of processors, which is what Intel or AMD are famous for, use something called the CISC architecture, and ARM processors use something called the RISC architecture. CISC means complex instruction set computing, and RISC means reduce instruction set computing. So what does that mean? What we have to focus on is the word complex or reduced. As we saw before, the processors have a certain amount of instructions or commands that they can execute. These instructions and even their name depends on the designer of the chips. CISC processors have more instructions than RISC processors. As we saw on the assembly code before, both processors understand the add instruction, let's say. And also they understand the MUL instruction, which do multiplication. But 
and this is an example, where a CISC processor might have an instruction called power of three, let's say, a RISC processor might not have that instruction at all. So if I am writing assembly code for a CISC processor and I need to raise the number to the power of three, let's say, I will use the power of three instruction that the processor has. But if I am on a RISC processor, I will have to manually use the MUL instruction three times to get the same result. In this example, with RISC, it will take me three steps, let's say three lines of code to do something that will take me one instruction on a CISC processor. The idea behind RISC processors is that the processor shouldn't do so much. It should not be able to do so many things. Instead, it should perform the basic operations really fast. And that is the compromise. In a CISC world, with one instruction, we can tell the computer to do something sort of complex, and that might take a little bit of time, or we can send multiple instructions to a RISC processor that will be executed very fast. Now you and me, we don't have to make this compromise because we use compilers. The compiler will generate the code for us. But we have to remember that before many of the programming languages that we are used to today were created, legend developers used to write assembly code by hand. Whole operative systems were written in assembly. And developers, as they do today, care about writing as little code as possible. So if you were writing code for a CISC processor, it would have been better because the processor gives you so many shortcuts and commands that a RISC processor wouldn't have. And also, and it's important to remember this, back then computers didn't have a lot of RAM memory. And when you open a program and you want to run some code, that program has to be copied into the RAM memory to be executed by the processor. Now that means that if you write a lot of code and your program is very big, there is more memory needed to be able to run your program. So when computers didn't have a lot of RAM memory and when developers used to actually write assembly code by hand, it made a lot of sense to use CISC processors because they had so many shortcuts and so many helper commands for developers. But now we have compilers and memory RAM is abundant, it's really cheap and nobody or almost nobody is writing assembly code by hand. But the thing that people care about most these days is battery life. We must consider that the more complex instructions the processor is able to process, the more energy it will need to run. And this is what made ARM and RISC architecture processors so popular among mobile devices, because battery life is one of the most important things. ARM processors are incredibly energy efficient. Also because RISC processors don't have as many features as CISC processors, they require less transistors and that means they are cheaper to make and also they take up less space. In 1985, an ARM processor had 25,000 transistors compared to 275,000 transistors from an Intel processor on the same year. And it was in 1990 when Apple picked up on this and asked the ARM makers, Acorn, to license the technology to use it on their Apple Newton. Then Nokia started to use ARM as well, and since then, more and more mobile and Internet of Things devices use ARM. But now you might be wondering why people still use CISC if RISC is so good. If you look online and you ask people around, the consensus seems to be that the difference between CISC and RISC is sort of blurry nowadays. They both have learned from each other and implemented the best of each other's features. ARM has implemented many extra instructions like this one, for example, that does JavaScript type conversion. So for some people, ARM is looking more like CISC and also some x86 processors have included some RISC features as well, so the answer is not really as black and white as we would like. We also have to think about backwards compatibility. Intel with the x86 CISC architecture has been around for a very long time. Time. There is a lot of software, computers, servers, banks, government that are running on software that runs on the x86 architecture. So the reason why we still use CISC could be because we have always been using CISC. Because the transition between x86 to ARM is not painless. There are still today M1 users that cannot run some programs because the developers need to do some adjustments to the code to turn them from x86 to ARM. But that is changing, as we know, and it's also thanks, I believe, to the business model that the ARM company has. ARM company doesn't make the chips, unlike Intel. Intel makes the chips, they have the factories. ARM mostly licenses the IP, the intellectual property. 
This means that other companies can use the ARM ideas, of course, after they pay, and they can make chips and processors customized to their needs. This is what Apple is doing. They are using the ARM technology, but they are customizing and optimizing their chips for their use case, which is their computers. This way they can have more speed running Mac OS and they get better battery life and they don't have to wait for Intel to innovate. This is also what Amazon is doing, actually. AWS is now promoting their new Graviton servers that are running on a custom-made ARM processor that are said to be 10 to 20% cheaper and perform 40% faster than Intel or AMD servers. Again, this makes sense because Amazon knows exactly where a server should be optimized so they can use ARM and optimize their chip for their server use case. Even Microsoft is starting to design their own ARM-based system on a chips for their next Surface laptops. So, to conclude, today we saw the difference between the RISC and the CISC architecture in theory. But the truth is that on the implementation, in the real world, the lines seem to be very blurry. On my part, I'm happy to know that thanks to ARM, the server costs are going down and the speed is going up. That is awesome. And also, I'm happy because there is competition and that means that the consumer is the one that will win at the end. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for leaving the comments on the previous video because this is why we made this video today. Because of you, I know what ideas to make and I know what you want to watch. So if there is something else you want to launch, please let me know on the comments. I'm going to be reading them right now. And also, if you like the way I explain things and you want to learn to code for free, then please check out our website. We have many courses. They are for free and you can learn JavaScript, React, React Native, Python, many other things for free with explanations like this one. Thank you so much. Again, stay happy, stay free. It's Kimchi. We love you. Kamsamida. Sanangheo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.